my podcast or welcome if you are a new viewer this is my little corner or living room maybe i should say where i'm talking mostly about knitting and spinning and also a little bit of sewing and crocheting uh, not often crocheting actually i think i have never talked about crocheting in my channel but today i will I'm coming from Sweden. My name is Emilia and I'm the founder behind Emilia Style. And I live in here in the middle part of Sweden on a farm with my husband and our four lovely children. And we have li a generation living, so my mom and dad are also living on this farm. Not in the same house. That would not be a great thing to do, I think. <laughs> they have their own house so sorry I told you I will be back in two weeks and actually I could have been back in two weeks if I didn't destroy my last recording or maybe I should say my fifth recording <laughs> because I did a whole episode last week and my lovely daddy decided he wanted to chop up some um, logs with a chainsaw and I barely heard him in here but my mic did decide to pick up all the sound from the chainsaw so it turned out to a horror movie like Jackson from Friday the 13th or something like that because you could almost only hear the chainsaw that was quite funny, but I have to redo everything all of it. But anyways, here I am. I am back. <laughs> it's the first day in Mars that I all that I can feel a little bit more relaxed because now the sixth of Mark Mars. I turned 32, the 13th of Mars, my oldest son turned 14, and yesterday, the 20th of Mars, my youngest son turned 6. So now <laughs> we don't have any birthdays before the 14th of October, when my oldest daughter, Tuba, birthday is so now we are done for a while <laughs> so anyways just should we just start with the fun things and I already struggle with words and I already struggle with the things I will say it's quite early in the morning over here I have just uh, put up I had just dropped off my kids to school and kindergarten <laughs> and have come back home. I have been outside and let all the birdie birds out and take all the six dogs out. So now we are going to have a sip of coffee and start this thing. Just jump into the fun stuff. Here we go. Finished object number one this week is finally the yellow cardigan. It's done. <laughs> it's off my needles. I will try to put it on to see how this go. On is one thing. <laughs> off is another one. So, maybe you should not have two knitted garments on the same time. This is how it's turned out. It had been a struggle, <laughs> but now it's done. It's off my needles and I really do like it a lot. I think it's turned out nice. So finally is off my needles. I had a lot of struggle with this one. It's not the pattern's fault. The pattern is quite much, I would say, because it's all over 
uh, pattern all over color work and it's a whole stick cardigan so you stick for the neckband and you stick for the armholes and then you got stitches and knit the sleeves in their own that's nothing that is scaring me because i like to stick i have no problem with that i have to done that done that plenty of times before so it was nothing with the sticking the struggle with this one was my bad choice of yarn i chosen to do this one in host super soft i like to work with host super soft don't get me wrong but host super soft trains i did take that in count for the body i blocked the body when it was finished and before I sticked it and nothing shrinked it was the same length and width of it when I had blocked it I matched it before and after I blocked it and the fun thing is I the main part of this one is knitted in this tote with two cones and it didn't take a lot of yarn I would say I think I used uh, 100 grams of this one this pink one is candy floss and this gray one is Oxford you have all of the heathering effect in them I really love I like their colors and the canvas and other two is just to take off everything and then I use these small cakes for this pattern and the sections of it. But anyway, in the main part, I used those two cones for the body and sleeves. The main part or the body didn't shrink at all. But when I was knitting the sleeves and I blocked it, they shrinked. Or the grey one shrink, not the pink one. That means that this turned out to look like a kid's pop-up book. You know, when the pages are popping out when you are turning the pages. So I had to rip them out, out again and start over. So I did. This one is knitted on 2.5mm needles and it's called for... 325 millimeter needles I think if I don't remember too bad but I have always thought I was a tight knitter because I usually have to go up needle size and not down needle sizes to get gauge but with Marie Wallen I think she is an extremely tight knitter maybe Because, yeah, I have to go down two sizes of needles. Oh, the luck on my cup cup. So anyways, and I did sleeves, of course, on the same size of needles. And they shrinked from the same cones. As I said, I ripped it out. I started over and did get up to the recommended size of needles from 325 the pink one shrinked and it looked like a total disaster and then I was so tired to rip uh, out the sleeves so I cut them up this part didn't shrink at all <laughs> I cannot lift up this arm without some help. But this part didn't shrink at all. So the thing I did, maybe I should do the other arm instead. Oh. Uh, I cut this one off right here, I think, somewhere. You can see a little bit of it. And then I actually sewn them together when I have knitted this part of the sleeves again. So I did like kitchener stitch between this and the other one. Because the third time I knit this one, I used a size 3.5mm needles instead. And then I knitted them 
from cuff down well, up instead and so put together over here instead and what do you used to say so I timed the luck or something like that and now it's finished and this is probably the last time you will see this one on me because somebody have already claimed this one and that's my mom of course and as you can see it's quite sunny today <laughs> So I'm a little bit blown out, but we have to work with what we have. So that's the yellow cardigan. And the other modification I did on this one, I actually decided to not use the color work, color work pattern on this neckband. I chose to do it in use these three colors. There's actually a band colored that are in my family history from my dad's side so I chosen to include that instead and instead of just cast off after this part I decided to knit it twice so I made it twice as long wide I should say flipped it over and sewn it down over my uh, stitching edge instead because the first problem I had when I was knitting this one, when I started with the hem, was it flipped over. It rolled up like crazy. I did go in and read the pages, the product page of this. I hope I said this is the yellow cardigan from Marie Wallon, but you have probably already read that on the screen. <laughs> but it is from Marie Wallon. So I looked it up many person have actually say that it's rolled up the neckband the hem the cuffs and it shorted so to prevent that i did this double instead and instead of including a band over my sticking edge i just did it this way instead and i actually did go back and pick up from my cast on edge uh, all the stitches and knitted four or five more rounds to prevent this one from rolling up again but I forgot to do that on the cuffs so they are as you can see they are flipping out I think I would try to go in and sew in some elastic bands in them or Maybe I will just put, um, pick up the stitches from the cast on the edge again and no, actually, we may because if I cut this off, this is actually <laughs> the bind on of edge, so I can actually pick unravel a little bit and just pick them up and knit a few more rounds. Maybe I would do it in this way so I can actually fold it over and sew it down. We will see. We will see. But for now, it's finished. And now this one is going to go into the other house to my mom. And she looks amazing in this one. And even though the plan was for me to use this one... <laughs> have it it's okay i have spent so many hours on this one and so many frustrated moments <laughs> and she will wear it a lot probably a lot more than i do because i'm the type of person who easily overheats but she is a frozen person <laughs> so uh, then I know it's going to be used a lot and that's the purpose I think <laughs> with them so I'm so pleased with this one I will just make a few photos on this one and then I have to put it into Nikki's make along thread 
L or hashtag on Instagram. Nikki is the person behind Knitting with Cat here. She's a lovely post. She's a lovely podcaster. She's a lovely person. If you don't have checked her out yet, go and check her out. I will link her down below. She is running a Marie Wallen make along, and you have plenty of time to cast on a Marie Wallen pattern because it's ending in August this year. Go and check her out if you are interested and go and make a beautiful garment from Marie Wallen. So now I will take this off. On is one thing, off is another thing, as I said, because of my left arm. See, I made it without too much trouble. Then we can talk about with number two. It's of course the Ariel pullover. And yeah, it's finally finished. It had been finished for a while. I think I finished it two days or three days after my last episode. In my last episode, I was uh, doubting between if I should knit the sleeves, yes or no. I decided to actually make the sleeves, as you can see. It has sleeves. This is knitted in uh, Drops Alpaca in the colorway Army Green. And I didn't have any more suited tank top underneath. So bear with me, you have to stare, to stare at the puckering under, <laughs> under over here. So the things, I think I talked about this in the last episode. The thing was, I didn't do the twisted rib for the neck or the shoulder. I did decide to do one by one rib to actually make that fit me more properly, suit me more nice, <laughs> embrace my left shoulder a little bit. Because I trying to prevent my garments to sliding down because I have two different sizes on my shoulders. That's something I have to learn to live with right now. And I will try to adjust my pattern or garments in the way I can do to make them fit because when they are sliding down on the side it drives me crazy and I mean it drives me crazy so I did it this way instead to actually have a little bit more of the ribbing effect of it uh, to squish it together a little bit and it, I think it's turned out nice well it have actually do work way better than I actually think it would. I have wear this a lot. I really love this one. And I still thinking of doing another one but without sleeves. Because I think this could be beautiful as maybe a tea, maybe um we will see what's happened in the future. But right now I'm gonna wear this to pieces and I hope it's not gonna be too warm too quick so I actually can wear this for a long time. And even if it gets too warm, I will wear it anyways. Then I overheat instead. <laughs> That's probably one thing I could do. But I live in Sweden, so the possibility to wearing my knitwear is endless because we don't have too much of a summer over here that's that I am thankful for but I'm a person that cannot wear things that are super hot anyways because yeah that's not me I don't like to be warm then we can go to finished objects number three. <laughs> this is the yeah, this is the what is it? <laughs> Brioche something from Andrea Maury. 
you have probably already read that one on the screen or maybe you're shouting it out but this is a shawl from Alia Mangre. It's a semicircle or a crescent shaped shawl with goddess stitch, brioche sections and goddess stitch. I cast this on last no not last Tuesday. The 9th of March I cast this on and I put this no, I cast it off this Sunday, so I took it off my blocking mat yesterday and have used this um, since. This part is my own hand spun. I think I talked about this one in the last episode, actually, that I would knit some type of brioche shawl, and I did, not an all over the shop. This was a bat from Limon Design and it contained local wool, it contained cotton rocks, some stellina and some silk and other fun things. And when you include whole cotton rocks in a bat, they can be hard to draft when they are popping out when you are least <laughs> know them and i think they are just beautiful because gotham fleece and locks have an incredible shine to it and i welcome them as they came so i actually have like a little bit of a tweedy effect why don't it want to zoom in as you can see, they are popping out, out a little bit here and there. And I really love it. <laughs> I'm gonna use this one to just fall apart, I think. So that's my finished object for this week that I can actually show. I have also finished a pair of socks and a masper hat for my husband that I had to pop in some picture. They was just a whip last time, the socks, and it was knitted in this colorway. This is um, Limo Designs hand dyed sock yarn in the colorway Weird Potato Baby. Yes, so that was all for the whip. No, it's not all for the whip, it was all for the finished objects. My brain is still not working, still not. It will never get better, I promise. So, whips. I would try to make this quick. Half finished object, a sock, mostly vanilla sock. Cuff from my neck sock. Information, too quick, maybe. <laughs> heel flap and gossip slip stitch heel details pearl bomb ha heart <laughs> this is actually a brand new pattern um, I did just put together with my other son and his girlfriend Astrid they wanted matching socks and they wanted in this colorway this colorway was only one scale left. This is also from a Swedish in the dyer. And if you are a returning viewer, now you're gonna be shocked. It's not from Limo Design. It's from Hex Cattle Dye. She also dyes beautiful yarn. And I think she and Limo using the same sock base. 420 meters, 100 gram skein, one skein left matching socks for son and girlfriend. This is Astrid socks, his, my David's girlfriend socks. And when I am finished with these pairs, 
I have to divide this one in two and do toe up socks for my son. My son have huge feet. They are long, they are broad. And in normal case, I have to use like 75 grams of, of one sock yarn for him. When I knit my husband's socks, I always have more or less 52 grams left. So I only use almost a half skein for his socks. That's not the case with my son. And Astrid, she has quite big feet too. She has big feet on me. So I have to work with what I have. So that's one thing, one thing I'm working on right now. We will see how long my son's sock will be. They will probably be finished in the next episode. Probably. And yeah, that's all for socks. Then I have another work in progress. I hope I don't go in too quickly. But here I have it. This is quite unusual for me because this is in cotton, two strands of premium weight cotton that I just hold on to a ball. And this is gonna be a pot holder. My husband had actually told me quite long now that we need new pot holders, and then he he said he can go and buy some new ones if I wanted. This is pure laziness from my side. Because I have so many cotton balls of yarn laying, uh, laying around at home. And I have said for so long now that I will make new pot holders. Because I think I have not made new pot holders in 5 or 6 years now. And our pot holder is turning out quite disgusting, <laughs> even though I always throw them into the washing, the laundry machine, and wash them like all the time. But you know, if you cook every single day, they are not gonna turn out so nicely anymore. So I really need to do a few so I can throw the other ones away. But Cotton and I is not the best friends when it's coming to knitting because I think that, that is quite harsh on my hand. But I would try to do the best I can and I have a lot of cotton yarn so I do a lot of pot holders and dishes. And I work for a few rounds and then I put it down and take something up, uh, other up to don't have so much more pain on my hands and the pattern for this one is the double thick pot holder from Pearl Soho everything I'm talking about that has a pattern I will link down below I promise but if we're gonna talk about crocheting that I have not done for a real long time I started also an other pot holder and I think it turns out quite nice this is actually a pattern or maybe a stitch I should say that my grandma t uh, told me when I was like 10 or so so this type of pot holders I have done a few <laughs> and this is something I can by heart so I actually don't have any instructions that I can link. Uh, maybe I can find some. Or if you really want to do one of these, don't hesitate to ask. Then I will try to write it down the best I can. So this one would probably be finished today. I started this yesterday. No, not yesterday. I started this. Sunday 
you may know them and I can remember a few days ago anyway and I using a three millimeter hook from I don't can't remember and my dog has shoon on it I cannot have my dogs nearby when I'm crocheting with my little dog I have two American hairless dogs they are named Solo Quintless and I have a mini version of them <laughs> and he liked to shoe on my crochet hooks the evil little one so that's all of my whips that are older and 24 hours <laughs> I also have the little yellow sweater that I shown last time I think or the episode before that but I have not worked on that for a while now I need to pick that up again I think I have a new cast on then because I have cast on three things that means or maybe I have cast on five things that means that I am at least allowed to cast on one thing <laughs> and I did and this is maybe a strange thing to do and yeah this is the only thing that is left from my own hand spun after I knit this once <laughs> this little tail then we can talk yarn chicken <laughs> I was a little bit worried in the end, but I made it. This is my new cast on, and I'm of course in the middle of this row, 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 row. So, and this is being also holds super soft, but. This will be the lace and fade boxing from Hoi Bokatai, if you pronounce it that way. And this will be my fade. Yeah. The reason why I chosen to do this in Holst Supsoft is one. All the leftovers from uh, the yellow cardigan. Two is already at home. <laughs> the three. I cannot think of a more suitable project for used whole super soft right now because of one, it's a boxy. Two, you don't have to take in count any waist shaping stuff like that three it's the wrong type of weight of the yarn because the lace and boxy the lace and fade boxy is called for heavy fingering weight or sport weight this is a very light Uh, fingering weight, maybe between lace and fingering weight, I should say. But the thing I can do is two things. And one, because of the shrinking of this type of yarn. And now I don't know what's going to shrink and what's not going to shrink. Hmm. This can be a problem. But I'm knitting it on three and a half millimeter needles, and I actually did go up two sizes. Because my size did actually landed right between size 1 and 2. I am knitting size 3. If I would have chosen a yarn, a sport weight yarn, I would have knit the size 1. I'm pretty sure about that because it's a boxy. But now I'm knitting size 3 and it's gonna be it's gonna bloom yes it will and i know 
it's not going to be so see-through because I used the three and a half millimeters on the sleeves on my yellow cardigan and this is knitted on three and a half millimeter needles but even if it's gonna be quite see-through it doesn't matter because you have all the lace sections that are see-through and if I am a good person I have probably already popped in a picture so you can see what I'm talking about and sorry for the noise, my dog is going crazy in the hallway. I don't know why. So, lace and fade boxy hoi block tie. And instead of mohair, I will use this alpaca folidron. And oh no, why are you using that? Isn't that not going to go in your Icelandic cardigan? Yes, it's. It should be, but I have actually trolled that one. It was not meant to be, I think. <laughs> so I have trolled that one. So they, and I couldn't figure it out when I put it down and thought I would remember everything I should do. It had no pattern at all. It was something I made up in my mind. And I thought I was going to go. When I put it down, I will remember everything. I picked it back up and realized. What is going on here? What have I done? What should I do? Yeah, so I pulled it. So that is currently what I'm working on right now. The lace and fade boxy from Hoi Locatelli. Yes, and that's actually everything for this time of this knitting content. I have no acquisition this time either, but it will be a new episode really soon. And I will talk about that more in a few seconds. But if you are going to leave me now, and don't want to hear about life updates, farm updates. So, as I just said, I said I don't have an acquisition this time. That's not true, because the first part of this recording is actually on Tuesday. Today is Friday. I have not been sleeping in at least 36 hours now. I will tell you really soon why. So we will add in this segment of acquisitions that I didn't have, that I now have, because they have arrived, a few of them. But in the next episode, I will probably have more, because I did order a mystery yarn stash box from Largason uh, or something like that. Max the Knitter and his uh, wonderful boyfriend's shop. I will of course link them. But of course I have also ordered a bunch of yarn from Limo Design again. And still I'm not sponsored but I really love her yarn. A way to color uh, use all the colors and the name of her yarn <laughs> so I have ordered some beautiful new sock yarns of course Ta -da. new babies and also this two but this one it's called Vad hände med bengan? What's happened with the bengan? This one, I really love this one. And the camera's not doing it justice. You will hear my dogs and you will probably see my little Alva and Victor appear because they are at home. This is a Samba Love. This one is Ninja Girl. And this one is called 
forms of scapa cows, she who makes chaos, and this to Carl Jung. I really love these ones. This will actually be a part of a summer knit or a spring knit, a tea. I will see if I can put in a picture of it over here. I have already planned it out what this will be. And I also order a new white, just natural white of opal yarn that I always using for my heel cuffs and my he my toe heels, heels and cuffs on my socks. So that was all for this acquisition and I also are actually expecting another order in I think today with a bunch of yarn that's actually drops air in a blue colorway that I'm gonna make the Gibbs two for my husband and I'm gonna make myself the Gibbs one. But that's more or less everything for this time in the yarn and good stuff. Uh, current life updates. Uh, I would say in the last <laughs> in Tuesday it had been quite well. I have not had my surgery yet because Alva catched the uh, stomach flu. So I have not had that one yet. And I had to reschedule that one to the 14th of April. And that's fine because that means that the hockey season will have ended then. And it's not so much much activities going for the kids uh, yeah actually it's like because when the hockey season are ending that means that the soccer season football season is starting but that's only my oldest daughter and this year also my youngest son will start football soccer yeah otherwise the reason why I have not been sleeping, I am a terrible sleeper anyway, as you probably already know if you are a returning viewer, but this time it's because of Alva. If you follow me on Instagram and read my story, she's fine, she's home again, we're home again, she's feeling fine. But she are um, born way too early. And that means that often when you have premature babies, they can have trouble with, with the airways. And so do she. And that means a few times a year before she had this problem, one, two time a month, we have to go to the emergency room and she had need to inhale some medication because she had a hard time to breathe but the older she gets you better she had become but the night between tuesday and wednesday speaking about alva she's now calling her big brother she's outside with my mom now she wants to speak with her son, <laughs> with her brother and anyways speaking about <laughs> other kids he's right over here you want to say hi no. he didn't want to uh, but she wake us up in the middle of the night or she didn't i literally hear her that she was struggling to breathe and this time it was quite bad because she has medication at home and often we don't have to go to the emergency room because it helps and it's easing up and then this type of seizure is going away but not this time so we spend the whole night on the emergency room with the medication she had to breathe in in this type of machine and it took a few hours, but then her airways open up again. But the hardest part in that case is 
you have to act quick but you also have to be as calm as you can because she has already panicked she is panicked a lot because she thinks she not can breathe and she's panicked and that's gonna do things so much harder but you have to stay calm so she don't have any more panics and try to relax and try to get her to focus on her breathing instead and still you have to act quick to throw everything in the car you have to see some somebody can take it, victor and the other kids and that's the big thing of living on the generation farm living my mom and dad are just in the house right right on the same spot so they have like two or three seconds to just uh, run in and uh, take the other kids and me and my husband can just uh, go away to the emergency room because we have not so far to the emergency room but we have a little bit of a travel so that's why i have not been sleeping for at least 36 hours even though she slept this night and she her breathing has been well again but the mama bear here <laughs> over here she is so worried and i always am and i never get used to this i know she's fine now i know she's probably not gonna have another seizure stuff with her breathing or what i should call it for a while maybe not a year again but in my mind she's my precious little thing <laughs> and i actually watch over her like a hawk Yeah. He used to ask me if he can take an ice cream. Uh, Victory, he's fine. He's uh, not sick or so. He just wants to be home with his baby sister. He is a very, very concerning brother. And I know he gets quite scared when this happens too. And we try to explain to him what's happening and everything in the same time that we're trying to acting as fast as we can so that that's just a little bit of a reason <laughs> because i was actually thinking of recording this part a little later in the evening on tuesday but i was so tired and yeah then i thought maybe i would do it in the morning but nope i didn't have the time but now we have some more coffee so that's more or less everything that's going on in my life right now we have so much things to do on the farm now when spring is arriving uh, every animal is starting to have babies it's just spring it's the magical of spring even though i'm always a little sad when i have to let go of my cold cold weather i prefer the cold weather but it's spring is also beautiful it brings so much joy when every small chicken are hatching all the small ducks are hatching all the small small turkeys are hatching and yeah all the flowers starting to bloom and you see all beautiful little sprout sheds sticking up everywhere and we have so much seed that had to get down in the soil right now and we have to start working on the field for the potatoes so we can put the potatoes down <laughs> pretty soon it's not quite time yet but it's a lot of preparation before uh, all of the actually maybe i should say the hard work but it's a quite much hard work before and because of my surgery being right now right in the growing season of the potatoes when we actually are going to plant them i'm not gonna be able to be in on that game that's not a game but it's something funny but i'm not gonna be able to actually 
help out with the potato field this year either but my two oldest kids they are superb when it's coming to the potato fields and uh, those two with uh, their grandma and granddad they make a perfect team so that's more or less everything that's going on right now and this time i will try <laughs> To be back in two weeks i will not have any type of destruction of chainsaws or stuff like that maybe i should record in our my and my husband's bedroom instead upstairs because i think that that's not so noisy upstairs maybe i will try that and i hope my kids staying healthy now <laughs> so they can be at school and kindergarten alva will be away from kindergarten at least to wednesday next week because then i know she's safe for real because if you have a new um round of this things i know it will be in a week so i will probably not sleep as much in this week but i have trouble with that anyways but now i cannot even sleep for an hour because i'm so worried and my husband is not working weekends anymore so he has to take the nights now <laughs> oh my god maybe i should just sleep and try to relax a bit but it's hard i think many of you can relate to that but in the next episode, anyways, it will be more acquisitions, probably. I will have cast on my husband's Gibbs weather, I hope. And I will probably have some progress on the Lace and Fade boxing. I have already made a, a little bit progress on it. I have actually joined for knitting in the round now. <laughs> So that's coming along pretty well, but I have some socks to do. But that was everything for this time. I'm so happy that you are joining me over here on my channel. And please like and subscribe. That helps my channel a lot. And stay tuned for the next episode because i think i will have a giveaway next episode i will not promise you but i have something in mind and don't forget if you are looking for a project bag like this this is mine and this is not gonna be here i get threads up all over the place i have this in my etsy shop and I'm gonna continue with my coupon code for my subscribers so you can have 10% off these ones. So everything will be linked down below. And now I am going to go outside and play with my daughter and also my son. The two small ones, the other ones in school. And I hope I see you soon. Bye bye.